Good morning, hoodies, and welcome back to the Hood Table. It's your girl one more again with another update on some trending news involving Sean P. Diddy Combs. Make sure you guys please like the video on your way in, please, and thank you very much. And also feel free to subscribe to the Hood Table if you happen to be new here. Now, as we all know, Sean P. Diddy Combs is still in jail. Um, he did have like a $50 million bond, but then it was revoked. So he's going to remain locked up after being charged with racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking, and other serious offenses. Less than 24 hours after Sean Diddy Cohn's arrest, uh, he appeared in Manhattan Federal Court where he pleaded not guilty to three counts, racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. Again, he was denied bond and will remain in, in custody at the notorious Metropolitan Detention Center indefinitely after the judge agreed with prosecutors and labeled him as a flight risk. We all know he got big money, right? So yeah, I understand totally why they are keeping him locked up. But anywho, the feds unsealed their case against Diddy earlier Tuesday, September 17th, which was about a week and a half ago. And the embattled mogul is facing again 15 years to life. He was taken into custody in New York late Monday on the 16th. Um, the feds claimed that the bad boy mogul operated a criminal enterprise to dominate the music business. The indictment alleged that Diddy engaged in a series of serious crimes over a period of years, leading a criminal enterprise that committed various offenses, including arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The chart is described as enterprise that allegedly trafficked women, used force for prostitution, and carried out criminal activities. Also, the indictment lays out details of alleged physical violence against women dating back to 2009, including striking, dragging, and other violent acts. Now, there are a lot of people who are coming out with charges against Diddy. Now, one thing uh, we were talking about the other day, Sean Diddy Combs, this book, Kim Porter, this book that came out, shall we call it a book or a pamphlet? It was about 60 pages long, but a lot of people have been, you know, alleging that the book is not true, that the book is a fake memoir from Kim Porter. Now, again, I asked you guys, what do you think about that? Because I read just, you know, a portion of the book, you know, on Amazon, they have like a sample. That's all I read because of the simple fact. I'm like, should I buy the book or not? People are saying it's fake. Even Sean Diddy, he had made a statement from prison. And of course, he is going to say uh, the book is a fake. Sean P. Diddy Combs issued a statement from prison calling a damning memoir allegedly written by his late ex-wife, Kim Porter, a fake. The 54-year-old mogul, father of seven, was arrested again September 16th and indicted on charges of sex trafficking, racketeering, and transportation to engage in prostitution. He was denied bail and remains in jail. And in the 60-page book titled Kim's Lost Words, A Journey for Justice from the Other Side, which is said to be filled with grammatical errors and spelling mistakes, which I saw even in the free sample. A number of graphic allegations are made about the incarcerated rapper's sexual encounters, including accusations of physical abuse. His attorney, Erica Wolf, said in a statement, the Kim Porter memoir is fake. It is also offensive, a shameless attempt to profit from tragedy. Now, somebody in my chat the other day did say that they also thought that this was just a way for somebody to profit off of Kim's tragedy. Now that P. Diddy is in jail, because again, I had asked you guys the other day, why now? Some people alleged the book come out now, came out now because of the fact that Diddy jail. And I guess they had a fear of letting the book out when he was walking around because maybe fear of retaliation. I still question that because me personally, if I had a loved one who I think was unalived by someone, instead of just having pneumonia or just some type of illness, uh, and it was like preventable or somebody contributed to their death, why wait? Like she died in 2018. It is 2024. 
So, I mean, somebody could have, like, you know, passed this on to somebody and remain anonymous. But no. They said her friends had copies of her memoir. But nobody turned it in. So I still question the validity of this memoir as well. But that's just me. You guys, again, feel free to let me know how you feel about that. But anyway, um, his attorney again said it is a shameless attempt to profit from tragedy. Unlike the fabrications in his sickening memoir, it is an established fact that Ms. Porter died of natural causes. May she rest in peace. Now his children, they have also broke their silence and they call it hurtful and false rumors for their late mother, Kim Porter. In this book, the children of Sean Diddy Combs, they basically saying, we have seen so many hurtful and false rumors circulating about our parents, Kim Porter and Sean Combs relationship, as well as about our mom's tragic passing that we need to, that we feel we need to speak out. 33-year-old Quincy Brown, Porter's first child, you know, the one by Albie Shore, he said that in a statement posted on Instagram on Tuesday. Now, as most people know, Porter died from low bar pneumonia in 2018, and almost immediately after her death, rumors began to circulate. And then this earlier this month, a book alleged to be Porter's memoir was released on Amazon called Kim's Lost Words, A Journey for Justice from the Other Side. And it details allegations that Diddy assaulted Porter, sparking rumors that her death was foul play. And remember in the little excerpts of the book that we read, it also alleged uh, foul play for, remember when Albie Shore got sick? And when Jamie Foxx got sick, there were allegations of poisoning in that memoir. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Albie Shore was sick on his, oh, child. That was really creepy. And then Jamie Foxx, out of nowhere. Now, I'm not alleging that this is true. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it, it it does look a little weird, right? A little eerie, a little creepy now that this book came out. But again, that's if you believe everything that in the book is true. That's if you believe everything in the book is true. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other allegations against Diddy. Now, as far as we know, let me pull this up right here. Um, recently, Thalia Graves, now that has been circulating around, you know, circulating around the news, this lady named Thalia. Now, she accuses Sean Diddy Cone's bodyguard, him and his bodyguards are drugging, assaulting her in 2001 and filming it. So let's take a look at this clip real quick. And let me put up my copyright. There we go. Legal troubles are mounting for Sean Diddy Combs. An alleged victim has filed a new lawsuit against him. This is Combs remains behind bars in a Brooklyn jail following his arrest on sex trafficking and racketeering charges. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Haskell joining us live in the studio with the latest developments on this one. Well, the plaintiff in this lawsuit, Talia Graves, as you just heard, extremely emotional. She delivered prepared remarks explaining how this incident back in 2001 has forever changed her life. More legal trouble for Sean Diddy Combs, who now faces an 11th lawsuit, which comes one week after Combs was indicted in New York on federal sex trafficking, racketeering, and prostitution charges. Talia Graves was 25 years old, dating a Bad Boy Records executive back in 2001, when she claims she was summoned to a meeting with Sean Diddy Combs, given a drink that caused her to briefly lose consciousness, then awoke to find herself bound and restrained. Graves says she was raped by Combs and later found out the incident was recorded. The trauma of the assault has taken a toll on my mental health. I've had PTSD, depression, and anxiety. I'm emotionally scarred. It has been hard for me to trust others, to form healthy relationships or even feel safe in my own skin. Also named in the lawsuit, Combs is head of security, who Graves claims was responsible as well. When she was slammed onto a table, her cries for help ignored. Defendants caused plaintiff to be de depicted in a video image, unclothed and with intimate body parts exposed and engaged in sexual conduct with another person. She would never have consented to the videotaping 
and did not consent. Graves' attorney, Gloria Allred, says her client did not come to her after last week's indictment and that her client first learned of the video recording last year, over 20 years since the alleged incident. They believe the recording may still be out there, being viewed and asked for it to be destroyed. It's a pain that reaches into your very core of who you are and leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. We reached out to Sean Diddy Combs' legal team, but we haven't heard back. ABC News has learned Combs is now living in the same barrack-style cell at a Brooklyn federal prison as crypto fraudster Sam Bankman Freed. That jail, you guys, the conditions in that jail that they are discussing right now, um, of course, you know, now that Sean Diddy Combs is in there, you know, it's coming to light. Um, you know, to the masses, you know, about this jail and the conditions in this jail. And it's no wonder why Diddy in there is trying to make up every type of excuse to get up out of there. You know, these people who commit these horrible, horrific crimes, once they get to jail, they complain about the conditions. They complain about, you know, not enough staff. They can, I mean, they're talking about, listen, you guys, listen, you guys. As far as this Brooklyn federal lockup, this Brooklyn federal jail where he is headed or where he is right now, they have horrific conditions, rampant violence and multiple deaths. That's where he was sent. A place that has been described as hell on earth and an ongoing tragedy. This is where he was sent. Now, a lot of people, again, when they get sent to these jails, especially these rich, famous people, who can, like, they got so much money to live anywhere they want. When they end up in jail, living in these conditions, you think they just think about, could I have stopped? Could I have got help? What could I have did differently? Nope, they just want to complain about the horrible conditions. They're not thinking about any of the charges they're facing because they believe that they've done nothing wrong. They believe that they've done nothing wrong, or at least they try to convince us that they have done nothing wrong. When they have done everything wrong. This, this MDC Brooklyn jail where he is, detainees there have long complained about rapid violence, dreadful conditions, severe staffing shortages, and the widespread smuggling of drugs and other contraband. Some of it even facilitated by employees. That's how it always is, right? Orange is a new black. <laughs> But at the same time, they say they've been subject to frequent lockdowns and have been barred from leaving their cells for visits, calls, showers, or exercise. That is where P. Diddy is right now. You know what? Sometimes it takes for these people to be locked up for them to realize what you are doing out here to people, what you are having other people do for you, you know, transporting, transporting all these people. Uh, helping you run this type of enterprise, not just him. It's a lot of celebrities out there. It's a lot of them out there. Some of them end up in jail. Some of them get away with it because nobody is brave enough to come forward and let people know about everything that's going on with these people. And then some of them end up not being able to handle being locked up and they end up unaliving themselves. And we all know who did that. Now, along with these uh, allegations that he's in jail for right now, I want to read to you the full list, full list of celebrities named in Diddy's court filings. Now, a number of celebrities appeared in court filings made in connection with music producer Rodney Jones' $30 million lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs. Now, Jones, as we already know, filed his lawsuit on February 26, making a number of accusations against Combs, including sexual misconduct and grooming. Jones has also accused Combs of participating in sex trafficking activity. Attorneys for Combs have strongly denied the allegations. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Now, here's the full list. Among the celebrities in the filing... We have Stevie J, that's Stephen Aaron Jordan. You know Stevie J, the music producer and television personality. Stevie. <laughs> okay, according to court documents, Jones alleged Combs used, uh, used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Jones' admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexual acts. 
a redacted name of a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Also, a Grammy Award winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Beijing billionaire whose name was also redacted. Young Miami, who was not labeled as a celebrity in the filing, but a relative of Young Miami is named. According to court documents, the cousin of Young Miami is accused of groping Mr. Jones. Prince Harry, according to court documents, Jones alleged Cone's associates gained access to international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. Cassie Ventura, a singer and dancer who previous lawsuit against Cone's related to allegations of sexual abuse was mentioned. Bishop T.D. Jakes. Bishop T.D. Jakes is not accused of anything in a lawsuit. According to the court documents, Jones alleged that Cones planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Georgia Mass Choir was named in the filing. In relation to his professional engagements with Jones and is not accused of any wrongdoings or involvement related to the alleged misconduct. Donald Lawrence, songwriter and music producer, Lawrence was named in the filing in relation to his professional engagements with Jones and is not accused of any wrongdoing or involvement related to the alleged misconduct. The Clark sisters were also named in relation to professional engagements with Jones and is not accused of any wrongdoing or involvement related to the alleged misconduct. Smokey Norfolk was named in relation to professional engagement with Jones and is not accused of any wrongdoing or involvement related to the alleged misconduct. Fahim Muhammad was named as according to court records or according to court documents, Combs head of security, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Hmm. DeForest Taylor, according to court documents, Taylor was named as Combs allegedly asked Jones and Taylor for a hundred dollar bill because he wanted them to do cocaine with him. Jose Cruz was named as a court document, alleges he is the gatekeeper to all of Mr. Combs recordings. I wonder how many recordings there were. I remember when uh, R. Kelly was going through his trial. And they say he had bags and bags. I mean, just duffel bags, garbage bags, just rooms full of videotapes. Just rooms full of videotapes. I wonder how many did, did he have? Hmm. Him and Kells could have been in competition with the most videos allowed to men. But anyway, you guys. <laughs> Again, make sure you guys are liking and sharing this video on your way in if you haven't already, please, and thank you very much. Now, one thing that is uh, happening right now why Sean uh, Diddy Combs is in jail. Now, we know this happens to a lot of people as far as like musicians, um, when they get locked up for something or when they pass away. You know, a lot of times their music, all of a sudden, there's like an increase in sales. Diddy's music is surging following his arrest. Now, what they saying is Diddy's catalog is actually gaining in consumption following his arrest earlier this month. Americans have been rushing to listen to the songs that made him a superstar, possibly out of intrigue or perhaps in support of the troubled musician. Now, that could be the case. They could be, you know, purchasing his music because, as we all know, these uh, court cases to hire these lawyers for these court cases is extremely expensive. Now, Diddy might have a lot of money, but these lawyers is going to take a lot of that money. They are going to take a chunk out of his money. But people out there, his fans, they are still interested in his work. The AP reports that streams of Diddy's music surged more than 18% in the tracking week that included his arrest. The week of September 16th, when he was arrested, when compared to the week prior, before he was taken away in handcuffs, there were already plenty of looming legal issues, but the arrest was a trending topic and a huge story in the entertainment world. And this type of increase in sales and streams is not odd. I did say that is not odd. And it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a huge population that is standing by Diddy through what may prove to be a long and complicated case. It's common for any artist who ends up in the news, either for good or bad, to see consumption of their music improve in the days and weeks following whatever reminds the world of their work. Didn't I just say something like that? 
But they said an 18% increase is notable, but whether it's enough to send Diddy back to the Billboard charts is yet to be seen. The hip hop artist doesn't appear on the list this frame, though he could find his way to one or two in the coming weeks, especially if fans continue to stream and perhaps even buy his tunes and out. Will I be buying his tunes and albums? Nah. No, I won't be doing that. But a lot of people will. And like I said, sometimes people are just intrigued. They want to know who did this. Who is this man? You know, most of us know who Diddy is, but there's always that one person, the, the few people out there who have no idea who this man is, or they have no idea to what extent or what his what all he has done over time. You know, all his work, all his accolades. And so they might be, you know, just interested. And then again, there's the fans. There's the fans who's like, oh, I got to support Diddy. Oh, you know. Or sometimes, when, like they said, when good or bad things happen, a lot of times people sometimes even, like, forget. They might even be fans, but they done forgot, like, all the hits that he done created or helped create it. So, you know, again, you know, it depends. It depends on how much, uh, how how the sales continue, if he might get back on the charts, okay? If he might get noticed for or recognized for something other than what he's being recognized for right now at this present time. Uh, now, you guys, I want to move to this. Now, we talked about, you know, the woman who had just had done a press conference. Um, and I think I said her name wrong, actually. I... What did I call her? Uh, Thalia. I think they called her Talia. I think it's Talia. So, so excuse me if I mispronunciated the lady's name. But there's another guy that I want to talk to you guys about who has also uh, pressed charges against Diddy and made allegations against Diddy. And the court has ordered Diddy to pay $100 million to this incarcerated man in Michigan. Oh, wow. One hundred million dollars. There's another lawsuit because there's like 11. OK, there's like 11 accusers. OK, and one of them, his name is Derek Lee Cardello Smith. Derek Lee Cardello Smith. So what happened to Derek Lee Cardello Smith and why was Diddy ordered to pay him one hundred million dollars? According to court records, Cardello Smith claims he was drugged and assaulted by Combs at a party in 1997, way back in 1997. At the time, the then 25-year-old was working at a restaurant in Detroit, which is how he and Diddy apparently met. Cardello Smith is currently incarcerated at Ernest C. Brooks Correctional Facility in Muskegon, Michigan, and was able to provide log records of Combs' communication with him while he's been in prison. Through his lawyer, Mark Agnafidio, Combs said he does not know of Cardello Smith. However, in an August 2024 hearing conducted virtually, Cardello Smith furnished visitation logs with Combs' names on them. <laughs> it's always some receipts. Like, oh, uh, child. Anyway, at this hearing, Combs attempted to settle the lawsuit for $2.3 million so that he could complete the sale of one of his properties. You know how we get down, said Combs to Cardello Smith. Well, I disagree with how you get down, he replied. Mm -hmm. When Combs did not appear for a subsequent virtual healing, hearing on September 9th, Lenawee County Circuit Court Judge Anna Marie Enzalone awarded Cordello Smith a default judgment of $100 million. In a statement to the Detroit Metro Times, Agnafilio said, this man is convicted, is a convicted felon and a sexual predator who has been sentenced on 14 counts of sexual assault and kidnapping over the last 26 years. He then added that Cordello Smith has now committed a fraud on the court from prison. But why didn't Pity go back? Why didn't Diddy go back to court? If you really thought this was a fraud, why didn't you go back to court? I mean, that's a lot of money that was being asked. A hundred million dollars, and you thought, I'm just not gonna show up. 
Now, as far as the things that the man is in prison for, let's see, this goes back to 1997. Um, it says he was 25 years old. So I didn't look into this guy's court record to find out when he was arrested or when these incidents took place that he was arrested for. But we all know that a lot of times things that are done to people when it comes to negative things, especially those type of things, sometimes gets recreated. Sometimes the victim becomes the victimizer. The prey becomes the predator. I'm not saying that in this situation. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But yes, Cardello Smith, they're saying, has now committed a fraud on the court. And P. Diddy is in jail now. He's in jail now. I don't even know if anything could be done as far as him claiming that none of that really happened. But you lied. You lied and said you didn't even know the guy. And then they have like records of you visiting the guy, communicating with the guy, trying to settle out of court. Child, you know what? You know what? Okay, let me give you the list. Let me give you the list because there is 11 people, as we said, accusers of Diddy. Um, one of them is Joy Dickerson Neal, who said Miss Ventura had inspired her to speak out alleged Combs had intentionally drugged and raped her when she was at Syracuse University um, as a student in 91 and had made her a victim of revenge porn by filming the assault and showing it to other. Now that sounds really familiar because Kelly had was accused of the same thing. At least that was one of the things he was accused for, the revenge porn. Representatives for Combs blasted the lawsuit as purely a money grab and had asked for it to be dismissed. Another accuser, Lisa Gardner, accused Combs and R.B. crooner Aaron Hall applying her with drinks and then forcing her to have sex with them against her will when she was 16. She also claims that Combs had visited her home the next day and choked her until she passed out. Combs' attorney slammed the claims as bogus. A woman so far identified only as Jane Doe claims that Combs, former Bad Boy Records president, Harvey Peer, is that how you say his name? Harvey Peer and a third person have violently gang raped her in a New York City studio when she was 17 years old. Mm. A few days later, Combs broke his silence on social media against sickening allegations by individuals looking for a quick payday. His attorneys are seeking to dismiss the baseless and time barred case. Mr. Pierre has meanwhile called the suit a tale of fiction. Rodney Jones. Rodney Little Rod Jones, a producer and videographer who worked on Cole's most recent album, accused the mogul of running an illegal racketeering enterprise in which he was forced to procure drugs, solicit sex workers, and take sex acts. And remember, he also claimed Combs and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. had groped him. They said he groomed him as well. He alleged that Combs groomed him for Cuba Gooding Jr.'s and others, without his consent, of course. Grace, or I don't know how to say her last name, Grace Omar K. That might be how you pronounce it. I'm not too sure. But um, Grace worked on a yacht leased by Combs family in 2022, accused the rapper and his son, Christian King Combs, of sexual assault. She blamed them for creating an environment of debauchery with suspected sex workers and top celebrities aboard. Crystal McKinney. Crystal McKinney claimed that she had been drugged and sexually assaulted by Combs following a Men's Fashion Week event in 2000, 2003 when she was only 22 years old. She also said he, said he had subsequently blackballed her in the modeling world. Mm, blackball, that happens a lot. That does happen a lot with these young celebrities, these new celebrities. Um, April Lampros, who says she met Combs as a student at New York Fashion Institute of Technology in 94, detailed four terrifying sexual encounters. Not one, not two, not three, but four. Four terrifying sexual encounters through the early 2000s. Adria English, a former adult film actress who worked with Combs in the 2000s, said he had used her as a sexual pawn for the pleasure and financial benefit of others during the white parties he hosted at his home in New York and Miami. Those white parties, we heard a lot about them, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Don Richards, 
who once sang in two Combs Assemble groups, including Danity Kane. Oh, I used to love Danity Kane. But she said she had personally witnessed his violence against Miss Ventura and that he had threatened her life when she tried to intervene. And then, of course, Talia Graves, the one we just uh, talked about a moment ago, the video press conference footage that we showed. Um, she's backed by celebrity lawyer Gloria Alred. Um, Clays Coles and his bodyguard Joseph Sherman have sedated, overpowered, and tied her up before recording themselves raping her and later distributing the sex tape. Representatives for Coles have denied the claims of all of the recent accusers. That's a lot of accusers, you know? And usually, even when it seems like it's a lot, there's bound to be more. There's bound to be a lot more, you guys. So that's something that, you know, we have to expect that there are bound to be a lot more accusers in situations like these. Sean Diddy calls, you better get comfortable in that jail where they say it's horrific conditions unlivable conditions, people being unalive left and right, assaulted. You got to get comfortable because this is probably going to be a long road. I cannot foresee him getting out of this situation. Can you let me know your thoughts on any of the people I mentioned or, you know, his case, um, the time that you think he might be facing. If you think this book, the book, Kim's Memoirs, if you think that is true, if you think it's fake, please leave your thoughts in the comment section. And again, don't forget to like and share the video on your way in and on your way out if you haven't done it on your way in. Also, feel free to subscribe to the Hood Table if you are new here. If this is your first time over here, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to subscribe. Also, please feel free to hit the join button if you want to join the membership. And also, if you want to donate to the commentary, our cash app is dollar sign, the hood table 402. Thank you so very much for tuning in, you guys. As we learn more and more information, as we get new intel, new receipts, new accusers, we will continue to give you some commentary on this particular topic. And on that note, you guys, stay safe, be blessed, remain vigilant at all times, and always remember to keep it hood. I'm out. Bye.